Hey there, Teddy Rubskin here, and today we're doing the top 10 misleading movie trailers. Yeah, these are trailers for movies that were quite fucking misleading, right? Now, that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes the trailer wants you to maybe not know what's going to happen in the movie before it happens. And sometimes it is a bad thing, because you may be expecting one thing and you get something else. But yeah, well, well let's get started with number 10. Scream! Yeah! Now, in this case, it was actually a good thing that was kind of misleading. Because right? the trailer actually makes you think that Drew Barrymore is going to be Hello. one of the main characters in the film. Popcorn. You making popcorn? Well, I'm getting ready to watch a video. Really? Now, but when you actually see the movie, though, she, she ends up uh, being one of the very first victims. You like scary movies? Uh-huh. And, and that's kind of surprising and shocking that she ends up dead. Like, you didn't expect that, right? Yeah. So, that's kind of a good thing. But, you know, she was in all the fucking advertising. She's all over the fucking trailers. In fact, she's even on the movie poster, right? Isn't that her face on the fucking movie poster? Yeah. Well, they tricked you into thinking that Drew Barrymore was in more of the movie. That's similar to number nine, Godzilla. Now, Godzilla did the same thing with Brian Cranston, right? Everybody thought, watching the trailers for Godzilla, that uh, Brian Cranston was going to be like the main character in the film. Because he's prominently displayed in the film, he's got, you hear his voice talking about shit. You're lying. It was not an earthquake. It wasn't a typhoon. But, uh, no, again, he dies pretty early in the movie. In fact, actually, the main character in Godzilla is this guy, who fucking sucks. I know, nobody likes that guy, right? And, and so that, that's kind of a disappointment, actually. It would have been better if Brian Cranston had lived a little longer, been in more of the movie, you know? Maybe, maybe if he didn't die at all, right? Yeah. Number eight is The Purge. Yeah, that, that, the trailers for The Purge actually set up a really enticing concept that the audience has really liked, you know? The idea that uh, there's one night of the year where all crime is legal and everybody can do it, run around, do whatever the fuck they want. You know, kill anybody, or, you know, do whatever. Right? Yeah, well, the, the actual movie wasn't really about the fucking purge. Actually, no, it was about Ethan Hawke and his family who were, like, locked into a house during the purge. So we didn't even see much of the purge. Instead, we see, like, these people trying to break into the house and terrorize this family. But we don't really get a good sense of the purge. Right, and it is kind of disappointing, right? We were rectified in later movies, right? The sequels to The Purge, we actually see more of The Purge. Yeah, because people like the concept. They just didn't like what, what, what little of The Purge we actually got in the fucking first movie. Yeah. Number seven is Jarhead. Yeah! Now, Jarhead is actually... A pretty interesting movie, but uh, the trailers were very misleading. They kind of set it up as being some kind of war movie. Yeah, with lots of action, lots of stuff happening, and uh, and humor. Right? And the trailer actually set it up that there was going to be some jokes and shit, but no, 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 no. The movie's very serious, and it's more or less a movie about, you know, um, the boredom of war, right? There's a lot of soldiers sitting around with a lot of time on their hands. And, uh, and, and kind, of, kind of this madness sets in. And uh, it, it's interesting. It's an interesting movie. But it's very slow. And, uh, and it's mostly dull. It, it, especially if you're expecting more of an, like, an explosive, action-packed war movie. I mean, that's not what you're going to get with Jarhead. And I don't think there's nothing I could do now to right my wrong. Number six is Funny People. Yeah, with Adam Sandler and Seth Rogen. Yeah, this movie, actually with the fucking title, uh, you expect it to be funny. And, and yeah, there, there's some jokes in the movie, but not as many jokes as you might think. Actually, the movie's more about a, a drama. It's more of a drama with fucking Adam Sandler and Seth Rogen, which is weird, because both those guys expect them to be funny. And, and there's a little humor, but... 
but not much. But mostly it's about Adam Sandler kind of facing death because he's got like cancer and stuff. And, uh, and yeah, but, but the trailers make it out to be a goofy, wacky comedy. Don't hurt him! This job is not at all what I thought it was going to be. Get in the ball, George! Ball up! This, this, this promotional stuff really, really didn't prepare you for the, for the more serious film they actually got in the end. And that's not good. Baba Booyow. Baba Booyow. Baba Booyow. Baba Booyow. Number five is The Professional, which is a really good movie. It's actually Natalie Portman's first film. She's very young in the movie, and uh, she plays this little girl that falls in with, like, a, an assassin, right? This assassin who, like, protects her from these bad guys that are trying to get it, right? But, but the trailer made it out to be, like, an action-packed fucking action movie. I mean, in fact, it said it was faster than speed. But that's not the movie you end up getting. No. It's, uh, it, it, there's not really that much action in the film. You know, there's some action scenes at the beginning of the movie, and then some action at the end of the movie. But uh, for a big part in the middle of the movie, it's just, you know, a drama. Uh, but so the, the trailers were really fucking misleading, saying there was like an action-packed, non-stop action movie with lots of action, and, and there's really not that much action in the movie. It's really not. But it's still a damn good movie, you know? Number four is Ghost World. Yeah, which is a movie starring uh, Thora Birch and a very young Scarlett Johansson. It, it's two girls that are like graduating from high school and, and moving on to adulthood, right? But but, but the, the movie trailer makes it out to be like this wacky comedy, right? Like, whoa, there's wacky stuff going on through the movie. There's like some gross-out humor, so it's like, a, what, is American Pie, except from the point of view of girls? I just hate all these extroverted, pseudo-bohemian losers. You guys up for some reggae tonight? No, no, not at all. In fact, the movie is really not very funny at all. It's really a drama about these two girls growing up and kind of growing apart. And, and, and there's, there's a lot of awkwardness in the movie, you know? It's kind of a sad film, really. You know, she, she makes friends with the Steve Buscemi and, and it ends up ruining his life. And it's, it's not funny. It's not really a funny movie at all, but the trailer makes it out to be a wacky fucking comedy, which it is not. Not at a fucking all. Any alcohol? After about five minutes of this movie... You're going to wish you had ten beers. Number three is Drive. Yeah, which is a really good fucking movie. Oh, yeah. But uh, the, the, the trailer makes it out to be an action-packed, non-stop action movie with lots of car chases. It's kind of like a Fast and the Furious kind of film. But, but it's really not, no. It's, it's more, like a, more like a thriller, really. The, the fact is that this trailer was so misleading that a lady actually sued the studio because she was so upset but, but, but when she went to go see the movie and it was nothing like she fucking expected it to be. So, I mean, that's why it's so high on the list. It's because this is actually the misleading trailer led to a fucking lawsuit. Isn't that wacky? Yeah. Number two is World's Greatest Dad, starring Robin Williams as, as a father of, uh, of a kid. Who, in the trailer, it makes it out like they're having kind of a strained relationship between father and son. Like his son is kind of weird and his dad doesn't quite get him. And yeah, that's the way the trailer makes it out to be. It's a wacky comedy, but um, actually I kind of think it's intentionally misleading. Because, I mean, actually, when you go see the movie, it, it's, it's a bit of a joke in and of itself what actually ends up happening. And I don't want to spoil it for you. Because it is a really weird movie. It's so weird. In fact, it will kind of blow your mind what actually ends up fucking happening. And, uh, I mean, it was actually directed by Bobcat Goldthwait. Who, you know Bobcat Goldthwait? Yeah, Bobcat Goldthwait. He's awesome. And he likes to make really weird movies. They, they kind of, you know, blow away your expectations. And this movie definitely does. I'm not going to spoil it here. But I, I think it's almost a joke that the fucking movie trailer is so misleading. Because when you go see it, it is pretty surprisingly fucked up. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but the number one 
the most misleading trailer of all time is, oh man, it's so fucking misleading. I, I mean, let, let, let me let me just show you a clip from the fucking movie trailer, right? Yeah. In one of the most remote locations on Earth lives the world's most prolific serial killer. He has claimed over 300 victims. Yeah. Okay, so 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 the, the movie trailer is actually telling you that there's like a serial killer, the most prolific serial killer of all time, Lives right? The world's most prolific serial killer. And to this day, he remains at large. Looks to be another mass grave. Hey, but, uh, he's not human. But he is not human. He's not human? Like, what, what the fuck does that mean? So, so what, is he subhuman? Is he like a mutant human? Is he like... An alien? Is it like Predator or something like that? I don't even fucking know, right? Well, I mean, th this trailer was actually so misleading that they, when, when audiences first went to see it on opening night, they were fucking shocked. That it turns out that the world's most prolific serial killer is a fucking alligator. Yeah, it's a motherfucking alligator. Right, an alligator that's really weirdly computer graphically animated and runs really fucking fast. It's really weird. It's really weird. It's really, really, really weird. In fact, audiences were just absolutely dumbfounded that this serial killer is an alligator. You know? I mean, I mean, can, can an alligator be a serial killer? Is it even possible? I mean, it's a fucking... I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. Prime Evil is the fucking movie. <laughs> and this movie is notorious for being just fucking what? I mean, people went to see it and they were just su fucking surprised. I, I mean, we, I heard about this movie. I, I remember when it came out. It was just, people were just dumbfounded that it's a motherfucking alligator. Well, maybe it's a crocodile. I, I, I don't even know. It, it, it's so fucking stupid. An alligator that's the world's most prolific serial killer. Is it, is it, it's, it's dumb. <laughs> Inspired by a true story. But there you go. There's my top ten list of the most fucking misleading trailers of all time. I mean, sometimes it's a good thing to kind of mislead the audience and they're fucking expecting something, and then you get something completely different. But most of the time, it's kind of fucked up. <laughs> it's kind of fucked up to walk into a movie expecting one thing and then getting something completely different. You know? But I don't know, what do you guys fucking think? What do you think was the most misleading trailer you've ever seen? A trailer where you thought it was going to be one thing. It turned out to be something completely different, you know? You know, write me a comment down below. And until fucking next time, keep it fucking real.